Oh boy. All right, so we can get started. Respect all your time as well. Okay. All right, Littoral Commander. Welcome everyone. So this is Littoral Commander. It's a game that runs for about two to six people. Uh, it's a high tactical game, so each of these units that you see represents more or less a platoon-sized element. Um, it's designed specifically with the, the uh, Marine Corps in mind by a former Marine. Um, the game itself is designed to run in about you know four hour, about four hour block length experienced players and or a facilitator. So uh, it fits right in with the needs of career school and sergeant school. Just for reference, I know you guys know that advanced school here uses a version of this. Mm -hmm. um, this is the commercial printing, so pretty much everything is the same. The only thing that's different is that they use these types of um, essentially unit unit cards in order to track supply rather than a spreadsheet, which literally just melted people's minds apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, the game itself is pretty simple, so there's essentially four phases to every turn. Um, first is a planning phase. Uh, players will meet in their teams, usually three on a side, to discuss what their tactical concept for the upcoming turn will be. They decide uh, what they, uh, which order they want their task forces to go in, and you'll notice there's kind of three groupings for each side. There's this one, this one, this one for the Chinese, and these two, and this one for the U.S. Each one of those is commanded by a separate player and they go in different orders. So during the, the planning phase, players will discuss which one they want to go first, because that does matter. They will also use what we call command points that are allotted by the scenario to purchase uh, joint capability cards, JCCs. These represent pretty much any capability that's not part of the core Marine Corps, essentially the, uh, the MLR that is represented in the game, or MLR, MLR minus. So, um, the, the amount of command points that you have to spend uh, is determined by scenarios, as are a lot of other things, so it's important to read the scenario booklet uh, carefully before you start adjudicating it. After they've come up with their concept and they've bought their cards and they've attached it, we go into a deployment phase. That's only on the first turn. Uh, that's when they essentially uh, place out where their starting position for their units are. They also, if there's any cards that require attachments, such as these ones right here, they assign them partic to particular units. Uh, you can tell that by, they have a little paper clip. They have to be attached. Mm -hmm. Super easy to remember. And just to uh, clarify, we're gonna lay out these cards like they are prepositioned, so there's no buying sequence for what we're gonna yes. do for So th that, that, that's under normal okay. conditions. For our purposes, mm -hmm. it does help to just essentially assign a handful of cards, I've yeah. uh, such as I've already done for the scenario you see right here. Mm -hmm. Similarly, for the deployment phase, just assign a starting position for each of the units. Mm -hmm. They can move around, they can request different cards if they have strong feelings about it, but you can kind of frame that in appeal to higher command uh, terms if you would like, uh, and you can shoot them down that way. After they've done that, we go into the action phase. This is the where the majority of gameplay takes place. During the action phase, each team, uh, starting with the player that has initiative as determined by the scenario, will activate one of their task forces each task force gets three actions that it can uh, do. So it's essentially three action points. Uh, so for example, I activate this task force. This is the Chinese ground component. I have three actions I can take with that. So there is uh, four, four core actions that are possible. Well, they can one, they can move and conceal. If they are flipped over like this, that means they are uh, revealed to the enemy. They know exactly where they are. They can. Uh, prosecute an attack on them easily. They have tax at one. If I'm the active player and I'm Chinese, I can move and conceal myself. I can do one or the other. I, I can move and not conceal. I can move and uh, conceal. I can just conceal and stay in place. That's right. one movement, whether you're doing yep. move and conceal or not. Yeah, okay. and that applies whether I'm moving this whole stack or I am uh, just moving a single little chit, a single little platoon. Just for clarification purpose, uh, I played a couple of war games, not a lot, but I don't know how much anybody else has played. The purpose of concealing is because when you're concealed, that means that you can't be targeted. You can't be targeted in the same fashion that you would be able to if you were mm -hmm. revealed. Right? Exactly. Okay. So essentially, the, you obviously can see the opponent's units that they're out there on the board. You know kind of where they are but you don't have tax at one. You can't put a warhead on their forehead, so to yeah. speak. <laughs> so that is 
that is what that's supposed to represent. Is it perfect? Because and there are cases when you wouldn't even know that they're out there in the general vicinity. Mm -hmm. But uh, for a tabletop exercise and of this kind of 10,000 foot level, that's not a level of abstraction that this game can really reach. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does other things well that make up for that. So it can move and conceal is one of the core actions. It can move and initiate combat. And we'll get into an example of combat here in a little bit. It can move and conduct a resupply with logistical units, which are indicated by these little blue uh, counters here. Or they can play a card from their hand. So there's a shared team hand, and I've already assigned a few of those over there. Uh, so activating any of your cards requires one action point when you play it onto the table. So I play Maritime Militia, I move one stack of units, and then I move and conceal, and I move and conduct fires with another stack. That's three actions. That is the end of this task force's turn. We then switch over to the other side. So the blue side in the scenario, they would then choose one of their task forces to activate and repeat that. So they would then go and take three actions of those four core actions, and uh, they, we would keep going and switching until all task forces have gone. At that point, we evaluate and see whether any victory conditions, as set out in the scenario, have been met, and we see who has the initiative going into next turn. That is determined by who destroys more enemy units in the previous turn, uh, and if it's a tie, it stays with whoever had it. So, so um, for clarification, it looks like so you said we have group one, two, and then three, yep. right? And one or minus. Uh, it, are these broken out in that same category? Like Absolutely. this is that. I'm yep. guessing this uh, section right here is is that group right there or something like that. Mm -hmm. It generally helps to organize kind of where the sheets are okay. by and it's same thing over there, right? Yep. Okay. So these guys, these guys, these guys are over here. Okay. So that just helps people. Kind so of I visually like relate. If I'm, if I'm playing on this side. I know, like, I can just look at my, I can be like, okay, well, I got high Mars, like, that's high Mars. I don't have to, like, be flipping more and be like, what the hell is that? So again? you, you, I'm just it, thinking it, about it generally, yeah, it generally helps um, to flip them over at the beginning, mm -hmm. but after that, you, if you just uh, think about it, you can, you know that what is in your stack of units. Yeah, okay. You want to know if it matters for, like, measuring the distances because some of the ranges on the capabilities do matter, mm -hmm. um, but generally yeah you, you you will know what the capabilities are just by looking here okay cool. so before I get into a little bit more detailed explanation of how like particularly combat works um, I'm just going to familiarize you with how to read each of the unit counters mm -hmm. so this is the exact same information that you'll see on the bottom side of one of these chits so um, in each unit the top left you should see a little native yeah, symbol counter that represents just kind of what actual type of unit it would represent in real life, whether it be mechanized infantry, infantry platoon, uh, or if it's a ship, it has a ship silhouette. On the top right, there's a gray hexagon with a number inside of it. That is its movement point value. Uh, generally, that is the amount of uh, hexes it can move uh, in one turn. Uh, but sometimes there are terrains that require more movement point value. So I'm green represents steep, one. Steep terrain. Yeah. and, and just on a side note, these maps are all done with like an ArcGIS analysis about like traversability and the, the roads. So, uh, love some ArcGIS. The, the maneuverability should be fairly, fairly high fidelity on mm -hmm. a lot of this. Um, so, you know, if I have two action points, I can two movement points. I can move here for one, and then here for another two. So that would make it a little bit hard for me to get in there. I could. You're always able to move at least one, mm -hmm. unless it's into these red, untraversable terrain. So, so you can't move through the red. You can't move through the red. And that's okay. essentially super mountainous, unpaved areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the other thing you need. So there's uh, below the NATO symbol and the gray hexagon. You also have a little uh, uh, name. It's two alpha, one alpha, one bravo, something like that. That's just a unique unit designator that keeps it separate from other similar units. So there are multiple infantry platoons that just keeps them separate. Then there are several colored boxes or colored circles that are underneath that. Those represent either its close, uh, close assault um, capabilities, which are represented by green, its long range strike capabilities, which are represented by red and orange, its interception capabilities, which are always represented by purple, 
and its logistical resupply capabilities, which are represented by blue. The large number in that space is the number that it needs to roll on a dice, on a die, in order to have a successful hit with one of its, uh, one of its ammunition or accessful uh, interception. So if I'm, for example, I have uh, two alpha here, it has a large six, and I roll two die, I spend two ammunition, I can spend as much as I have ammunition for. I need to hit a six or less in order to successfully do damage to an enemy unit that I'm firing at. Okay, so six or less. And just uh, back to your point, uh, Gunny, uh, the you can only fire at revealed enemy units. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> there's also a second number in each of those boxes. That is its range. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if you see here, this is six with a superscripted zero. That means it has to be co-located in the same hex in order to fire. Because wow. this is all like close assault rifles, short range anti-tank stuff like that. Infantry is useless. So <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> infantry is, is that pretty small tough. arms weaponry. Well, when I'm you think the, yeah. the hexes are what twenty kilometers yeah, yeah. in in uh, diameter. Makes yes, sense. about okay. yeah twenty kilometers across. That kind of makes sense. Uh, so um, they are. So this is a lot about strike warfare. I'm feeling real forces on twenty thirty. Let's cut the infantry ish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> The, so the, the effective range is about 300 yards for yeah. the typical unit. So while it isn't necessarily meant to say, hey, infantry is not important, it's mostly simply to say unsupported infantry <laughs> is yeah, yeah. less effective. Uh, we'll we'll write on the infantry guys. <laughs> so you, know, you can boost it through various different cards which have an effect of boosting that. But uh, So if you'll notice that there are also um, certain, cap certain uh, ones like, um, for example, uh, we've got one one Charlie right here. Mm -hmm. There are two red cubes there. It means it has two different types of long range strike uh, ordnance. Mm -hmm. So the one on the left is represented by the red cube. The one on the right is represented by the orange cube. You'll notice that the one on the left has a shorter range and has a worse combat value. So it hits on lower, hits on fewer numbers, and it has a shorter range. But you have more ammunition for it. So it's less exquisite. And that essentially represents, like in this case, like Gimlers or something. Whereas the more exquisite one, you have fewer of them, but they have better range and they hit on better numbers. So that's so gonna be like Nemesis, or you know. Yeah. So, so ten and the ten and four one that mm -hmm. their their amount of ammunition is is dependent on where that square mm -hmm. is for the starting point. Yes. Okay. So this and one comes with six pieces of ammunition, the nemesis, I have three naval strike missiles, essentially. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Um, and, sorry, I forgot to add one last cube. There's also a prism strike munition that's added to there, mm -hmm. and any additional cards, they are generally represented by oh, okay. a gray cube. Put that on okay, six. Two. One and six. So, th that's how you kind of distinguish between if there's two of the same color. Um, the, for interceptions, um, for so for, sorry for long range strike, um, you ro can roll as many die as you have ammunition for when you're declaring an attack. Say you want to declare an attack with one one Charlie, you send six ammunition from its uh, ten rent four number, so it's a uh, Gimler's essentially. You move that down all the way to zero, and you so will, you will roll six dice when declaring that attack. Is there anywhere you put it when you? Yeah, you can just set it off, off the side. Okay, yeah, so if I want to throw six out there and then I what, grab one die? Uh, no, you roll six die. Oh. So you'll do that. So. Oh, because I'm doing six pieces of ammunition. Got exactly. It. So you roll one die for each uh, ammunition expended. Okay. Before you roll, the opponent would get a chance to declare any interception strikes. So uh, say you're declaring an attack on me, I'm going to use my, what, uh, two minutes in range. Uh, in range of the target, I'm going to use DDG-104, this Type 55 mm -hmm. head, and it's got nine interception supply. And I'm going to use six of those and move it down from nine to three. Easy enough? Now we're both And then I both roll, we both roll six die, and you hit on tw uh, tens or less, I hit on uh, fourteens or less. Based on the card. Based on the durability. card and the capability. Okay, so I'm hitting on 10 or less because that's a 10 right there. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I get one, two, three of them. Three of them go through, but then depending upon your ability yeah. to intercept, as long as you get three or more, I don't get any hits on target. Exactly. So, ooh, that's a. Yeah. It can be pretty tough, but 
you know, one of the things that this game does emphasize is that you solutions are easy to uh, solutions are easy to come by if you just throw enough ammunition at it. But how do you sustain that? Yeah, because now I have now this is useless them. almost, right? Uh, you know, pretend that I don't have the naval strike missile. Now, if I expend all my stuff, now I just have a high mark system sitting there with nothing to shoot until you, yeah until, until, until you resupply. resupply. Yeah. Yeah. So, and ships each turn represents about two hours. Ships don't resupply in this game. Oh wow! So ships go got what they got during the opening phase. Yeah, they generally start with a lot more. Yeah, because you yeah. know, vertical launch system have oh, a yeah, bunch of yeah. bunch of cells. <laughs> yeah, Those yeah, things are packing. <laughs> Type fifty five Renhe is armed to the teeth, um, but overall. Um, that's one of the things, managing your magazine and not blowing it all, uh, and knowing when to uh, go Winchester, so to speak, yeah. you know, those are things that this, you know, kind of emphasizes that there's logistical constraints on conducting a expeditionary uh, operation. So there's no, I mean, just, there's no resupplies? So there are resupplies, uh, but none for the ships, just because they would have to go into a port that's specialized. Okay, so like the high Mars and everything like that, mm -hmm. okay. and you would have to be like, yeah, right. so that's one of the four core actions, is to resupply. If so if you wanted to use one of your action, one of your three actions that you get to conduct a resupply, mm -hmm. say for example you did uh, use my high mars. Use your high mars, and now you want to resupply. So there's two values on that uh, mm -hmm. logistics company. Mm -hmm. So you see there's a two with a range of six, and there's a six with a range of three. Mm -hmm. Those are different, essentially, throughput amounts. So if I'm logistics, I can uh, resupply up to two to any units that are within a range of six. Uh, but I can resupply up to six to any that are within a range of three. So the closer you are, the shorter the trips, the easier to resupply. Yeah. You can resupply, so essentially, Not the range. So if say I have a logistics unit here, and I want to resupply these guys. One, two, three, four. I can't go through any, any occupied zones, and I can't go through any in, um, impassable terrain. Everything else is fair game, and then also it can't go over water, obviously. So if there's if this stack was over here, then you can't go that way. You have to go around the town. Is that what you just said? Yes. Okay. So say if like I had a logistics unit here, it would I wouldn't be even if this guy was right here, and right here. They are technically within range of each other to resupply, you can't go through but it can't go through can't go the enemy hexes. Area. Yeah. That makes sense. And then uh, same thing goes for these. Uh, crazier terrain, right? So, so if this is my logistics and I want to resupply this guy, I'm only one, two uh, away. Is so the crazy terrain you only you don't you don't you can't go through these red terrains. Everything else you just ignore because for you logistics want to purposes? For logistics okay. purposes. All right. Because if you we started doing it for logistics it'd be a little bit too much to keep track of. Yeah. We're trying to not get too much in the weeds with that. So logistics is clear cut, whatever the yeah. movement is you can just move. As long as you don't go through the red but you can't or enemy right. health. You could go through your own guys, though. You can go through, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. That's so the these are big areas, and there's no like hex crowding kind yeah. of penalties. I don't know if you've played any other games that sometimes do have those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I've, I've had, so that's why I've asked you that you can. Yeah. yeah, okay. But so that's more or less how it, how it works. Um, that's, yeah, no, that, that's the main thing. So um, if you guys want to, we can go ahead and we can just have you guys divide into teams, play and we can turns. play a couple yeah. turns, give you a sense of how this goes, and then um, we can talk about setup on, you know, for Wednesday and Thursday, yeah. okay. and kind of go through that. Any questions before we get started? Figure it out along the way. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I think that's the best way to That work. is generally <laughs> the best <laughs> thing. It's a little overwhelming, and it's... We're trying to model, like, all domain warfare, and this is about as simple as I think this is a lot better to see and hear in this, a lot better than what we have been doing. Oh, for sure. Well, it's much more centered on what the future is and actually getting to think about like naval integration yeah. and naval strike missiles coming from a land Instead platform that the Marine Corps is taking care of. You're this guy, and then what are you going to do with this town? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I sent you a picture of what our, our other. Uh, and I, I did see that, I did see that played, and it's. There are useful uses for that type of matrix game. You, it's I just, you can get some stuff, but, but um, then definitely everything has its uses, and that's I don't think quite up to what you need here at Career. I school. think that th that's good for Lance Corporals at Lance Corporal Center. Yeah, honestly. absolutely. Because yeah. you, you get them thinking about it, and you get them the beginning of that critical thinking. Yeah, yeah. But by the yeah. time that they're assessed, they need to be thinking yeah, exactly. about yeah. what so we're doing in real life. Yeah, this the way that we are using this is we're not teaching tactics here because even in the best war games and the best 
computer simulations, everything's only a model of how things work. Mm -hmm. So we're not teaching tactics on like, this is how you would beat the Chinese if they did this. This is more like, how do we adapt to changing situations? How do we uh, adapt in our thinking and our course of action development against uh, a thinking Being opponent? Yeah. yeah. So that is that is the main value of that. The fact that this also models 2030 time frame, future capabilities, stuff like that. I like the like capabilities that. aspect. Cause yeah. A lot of students, you know, depending on your MOS, like, I don't know what the heck HIMARS does, right? Or naval integration or like all these different things. Like this at least gives them thinking about these are the technologies that are out there or will be out there. Mm -hmm. And now you can actually kind of apply them, right? So. And if you w really went down the rabbit hole, right, with a hundred different cards. He, with a hundred really different cards and stuff. you guys can look through these if you would like, but then they're organized kind of by type. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that we already have in here, like, uh, Anglico, uh, but you know, like hypersonic glide vehicles, that's not out yet. Yeah. Uh, but they act in some, some sort of way about kind of like flashcards for uh, joint I operations. I like that they have that integration in this. It's actually really nice. That. Mm -hmm. Flashcards for joint operations. Yeah, you, you're thinking about all domains, right? Yeah, you got exactly. everything from yeah. space to that's naval to ground land force. It's uh, actually pretty smart. Yeah, there are cyber aspects in are. the cards too. Yeah. I'm sorry? There are cyber aspects in the cards too. Yeah, so there's, there is there is cyber aspects. Um, one of the one more detailed yeah. ones, the tactical network, this is kind of like a card that always is on the board and that is essentially a representation of the player's uh, command and control C5 ISR mm -hmm. uh, networks. And other enemies' cards, uh, such as PLA Strategic Support Force or the MIG, uh, the Meth Information Group, uh, they can target the opposing persons. And as we essentially add cubes on there, and then as cubes get added, they degrades de the de degrade the network, and they start taking penalties to their dice rolls, essentially for their long range strike. And so their your your global positioning gets less and less accurate and stuff like that. Exactly, so. their communications become less. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. That's kind of how it represents. How many rows the number? So that would be the command point value. Uh, so. That's as I mentioned, card. that's when you're buying the card uh, during the planning phase, but for the purposes of this, we kind of skipped that step. For our students, so won't the way that these have been, uh, the way that the cards have been uh, out allocated their uh, command point value is one, based on kind of how exquisite it is, and two, how integrated it is with, with the Marine Corps. So mm -hmm. stuff that's very kind of organic to the Marine Corps, like uh, is there one? Like, yeah. I don't have to pull anybody's arm to get a high Mars system. Yeah, we, we own it. Whereas, like a hypersonic light right, vehicle, sense. yeah, five yeah. being the satellites. Yeah, okay. it's like we gotta get with the space force. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so that makes sense. And you know, in, or Gen or five more advice, or advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah Gen, Gen five, five fighters. <laughs> you know, yeah. that is control. That would be put constraints on you. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we're just gonna go ahead and do this. Anyone want to play the Chinese side?